It's night, intense music is playing, and we're watching the front door of the Whizbang Toy Company. Today, a whizbang is the same thing as a whoop de doo or a how about that. It's something that's superficially impressive, but underneath there's not much to it. But in World War I, where it originated, it meant something very different. A certain kind of German artillery shell made a distinctive sound as it came at you and blew up in your face. Allied soldiers described it as whizbang, and that became their name for that type of shell. I wonder if our toy maker knew that. Remember the good old days when a nice panic could make you hit the gas pedal too much and flood the carburetor so the car would refuse to start? Me too. You can guess where he's going. It's after hours, so Honey is relaxing with Bruce. Bruce, why do we always have to watch your show? That's what you get for teaching him how to use the remote. Our man leans on the doorbell until Honey gives in and answers. The door, Miss West. Chris, hold it. What happened? May I, may I have a glass of water, please? Of course. He's not injured, but if you've ever tried to do any hard running and you're not in shape for it, you can empathize with the cramps he's feeling. I've often said the only time I might genuinely run is if something really big is chasing me. And I'd say that qualifies as something really big that's chasing him. Honey can't stop it with her gun or anything else and it knocks her unconscious. You can guess the rest. Matters was electrocuted, 25,000 volts worth. Well, that walking scrap heap must have had a super dynamo for a heart. You said Matters was a client? He hired us about a week ago to make a security check. Security check? On the management of Fantastic Toys. Why would the president of Whizbang Toy Company want a security check on his biggest competitor? He was planning a merger with Fantastic Toys. Security check is merely routine. Depending on the details of the merger, that could be a motive for a murder. But going to such elaborate lengths seems a little, uh, cuckoo? Did you notice anything different about that robot? Different? Well, now that you mention it, he had the cutest little Cary Grant dimple just where his chin ought to be. Thanks. You're welcome. Different how? Different from what? What is she supposed to compare it to? It had a better hat than yours? Is that what you mean? Speaking of hats, they were pretty well on their way out at this time. In shows of this type, you'll often see the older guys wearing them and the younger guys not. That's a pretty accurate reflection of average American society at the time. When I was little, my dad wore one every time he went out. But by the time I was about 15, he had stopped. I can't wear a hat. I can't stand the feeling of something on my head like that. I can put one on for a video like I did with F Troop, but as quick as the camera goes off, so does the hat. <laughs> Sam, I want you to look at something. What do you make of this? It looks like a metal stamping. Where'd you get it? I found it next to Mr. Manor's body when I came to. Why didn't you hand it over to the lieutenant? It's the only clue, clue we have. have. Now they just have to figure out what a simple plain metal disc means and how it ties in with Mr. Manners' murder. Speaking of Mr. Manners, his nephew Byron calls and wants to talk to Honey right away. Sit down, make yourselves to home. I try to do 200 every day. Great for the eye. So are carrots. Carrots? <laughs> Fun me. Sit down. How about a drink? Well, isn't it a little bit early? Oh, come on, be a sport. I hate drinking alone. It's not a problem this early in the day since his favorite drink is an ice cream soda. Let's face it, I look pretty guilty, right? One or two scoops. None for me, I'm driving. One, please. Uh, what do you mean by guilty? At least the police seem to think I'm suspect number one. He says he had no reason to kill his uncle. He just took over the company and presumably became a whole lot richer. I have a feeling that's what the police are looking at. How did you feel about the merger with Fantastic Toys? Against it from the start. So was New Earth. 
The poor boob. Boy, did he panic. Newworth? Ronald Newworth, our treasurer. Honey wants to look around. Byron can't give them the tour, but Newworth can. Oh, how clumsy of oh, me. I'll get it. Excuse me. Here we are. He didn't seem to notice the disc, or if he did, he hid his reaction well. Sam wants to go check a few things out, so Honey will do the tour by herself. Miss West? I'm Ronald Newworth. Oh, I'm sorry if I took you away from your work, Mr. Newworth. Your presence makes my work seem all the more worthwhile. <laughs> Would you like to see the testing lab first? Oh, that sounds very exciting. The testing lab looks like Dr. Frankenstein built it. While Honey is staring, Newworth gets called away for a moment. Isn't that handy? Now she can snoop a little. I hope they plan to pay her royalties for Quick Draw Barbie. G.I. Joe had been introduced two years earlier and the idea of an action figure as opposed to a doll started to catch on. By about 1970, the distinction was established. Girls play with dolls, boys play with action figures. The difference was in what the figures did. Dolls dressed up and went to parties and had fun while action figures blew each other up. If you got caught crossing over, you could expect to be laughed at for a long time. That was if a girl got caught playing with action figures. If a boy got caught playing with dolls, he could probably expect a bloody nose. Believe it or not, there are people who want to go back to that. If a boy dug Barbie or Skipper or the Little Chaps or anything like that, he could expect to be a pariah. Kids weren't allowed their own preferences in a country that ostensibly worships freedom. Next time some macho dude starts talking tough, put a nice glamorous Barbie doll in his hands and ask him to examine it for you, you think something might be wrong with it. Be sure to include lots of clothes and accessories. Then come back in an hour without him knowing and see what he's doing with it. Can I be of some assistance, young lady? I was waiting for Mr. Newworth. But truly, he's not locked in the closet. No, he was called back to his office. I was just making sure that the lock was secure. Lame, honey. Just tell him you're a typically curious female, but when you realized the door was locked, you moved on to something else. He's Professor Von Kemp, and he runs this lab. But honey suddenly needs to be somewhere else. This is getting a little uncomfortable. Oh, I see you've met the professor, Miss West. Yes, I'm afraid she wants to leave us, Ronald. Oh, I'll make it a point to come back. There's so much I haven't seen. Oh, clumsy of me. New Earth won't react to the disc either. They say a woman's eyes are the key to her intentions. I've usually found the contents of a handbag more revealing. Then unless that disc does mean something to him, her intentions must look pretty dull. What were you doing at the Securities and Exchange Commission? We're not incorporating, are we? I was checking on Wizbang's financial statement. Guess what? Manners owned 51%, and the rest was split up between Byron Newworth and Zubin van Kemp. So? Well, with Manners dead, Byron stands to inherit his share. That'll give him controlling interest in the company. And if he didn't want the merger to go through for some reason? He said himself he was against it. Not a bad motive, but Byron really doesn't seem capable of killing someone. You may have noticed that Honey is in her uh, working clothes. She wants to know what's in that closet that the professor was so afraid to talk about. Sam will cover her from outside while she breaks in. Well, at least he didn't get a lump on his head this time. She spends some time experimenting and realizes that the noise happens when she gets close to the closet with that disc. When she leaves it out of range, she can open the door without hearing the sound. For reasons I can't fathom, she tucks the disc into her waistband and opens the door.
Gee, it was the killer robot making that noise. Possibly the most obvious reveal ever. A call down to Sam gets no response. Better go see what's wrong. Come on, get up. You're not hurt. How can I be hurt? I'm dead. Okay, Sam may have to wait a little bit. Byron was working late and heard mechanical noises coming from the lab, so he went to investigate. He really doesn't know what was making the sound, so Honey will show him. Stand over here. I have quite a surprise for you. Mm -hmm. That's quite a surprise. The surprise is the Blue Fairy turned the robot into a real boy. I found the robot. Great. Let's get him. I lost him. You lost him. Well, it wasn't very easy. Somebody traded me a very live robot for a very dead professor. He's in the lab. Sam is still feeling the effects of the gas, and she throws that at him. Good thing he learned a long time ago the best way to deal with her when she's like this. Just go with it. Oh, they were here when I left. Yeah, well, where did they go? Why is that door closed? It was open. Why don't you open it and find out? You open it. I don't think I can take any more. The closet is empty. And this is starting to feel like an Abbott and Costello routine. Are you sure somebody didn't toss you a beach ball? Sam! <laughs> Thanks. That joker's playing for keeps. He's got to be around here somewhere. I have lots of questions about that trap, but nobody will ask them. Instead, they'll go search for the robot and whoever is controlling it. We already know it because we've only met three guys. One of them is nursing a sore butt after Honey threw him. Another is dead. And as we've seen multiple times, it can't be someone we haven't met. Sam is in the warehouse. Honey is searching the factory. Looks like Sam wins. I don't think he wants to collect the 25,000 volt prize, though. He's following me. Well, if he's following you, you must have one of those metal discs on you. Get rid of it. Somebody must have planted it on me during my siesta. The big question is, where'd they hide it? He has to try and search his clothes while running from that thing. If it was me, I'd just take everything off and see what the robot chases. But this was a primetime show in 1966. You didn't do stuff like that. A hunk like Sam running around in his skivvies could destroy society as we knew it. It'll go chase the disc, giving Sam time to get to where Honey is. Sam? Must be the mating season. There's another tin woodman here. She lets it chase her for a while, then takes the disc and throws it far away. Go fetch! Who wants the disc you want? Not me. Either she has a second disc on her, or this thing is programmed differently. With a cough like that, you can make a fortune in commercials. Ha! The answer is C. It's a guy in a robot suit. Since we're in a toy factory that makes all kinds of goofy stuff, let's capture him the Looney Tunes way. We won't see what happens to the actual robot, but this one is finished. Well, you were, of course. How about that? They just don't make robots like they used to. He should have tried to buy Mr. McTavish from Professor Pepperwinkle. Why did he do all this? Because an audit of Whizbang's books revealed many monies missing. The merger would have exposed that and he would have gone to prison. He's going to prison anyway, the only difference is now he's killed two people, so he probably won't be in a cell for long. He'll be in a very special chair, but he won't be there for long either. 
Byron liked the robot, but said it was too big. He redesigned it, made it look a little cooler, and sold the prototype to the IAD for an undisclosed amount. The IAD used it until 1997 when it underwent yet another redesign and was given an entirely new mission. Its current whereabouts are unknown. That's a pretty accurate reflection of an average American society at the time. An average? Why did I say that? Isn't that handy? Now she can snoop a little. Mmm. He should have tried to buy Mr. McTavish from <laughs> That's not easy to say. So he probably won't be... Man, I could feel that falling apart. <laughs>